Hi guys, Svetlana Soltak here and today I'd like to show you how to make these super handy fully lined drawstring bags. Now these bags are quick to make, don't require too much fabric as two fat quarters is all you need and are a wonderful way to keep things organized. This bag finishes at 9 inches wide by 12 inches tall, is fully lined and I added these two ribbon tabs as a fun little decorative accent. To make this bag, you will need two 10 inch wide by 12 inch tall exterior panels. I'm using Essex linen, but quilting cotton, denim, or canvas would work fine. Two 10 inch wide by 12 inch tall quilting cotton lining panels, two 10 inch wide by two inch tall strips of quilting cotton for your drawstring closure. You will also need two 26 inch long cords or ribbon. I'm using macrame cord. Two optional ribbons. One is one and three quarter inches long. One is one and a half inches long. You will also need a safety pin, plus all your standard sewing and pressing materials. Let's start by placing one of our drawstring casing strips right side down on your ironing board. Fold short end over to the wrong side by quarter inch, like so, and press. Fold one more time and press again. And use some steam to make sure you get nice crisp edges right here. Now fold and press second short end as well and repeat the same process for the second casing. Let's take our drawstring casings to the sewing machine and stitch along the folded edge right here using 1 8 inch seam allowance. So do the same for all four short ends. Bring both drawstring casings back to your pressing board, place them right side down, fold in half, wrong sides together, like so, and press. And the other one as well. Again, use steam so you get nice crisp folds right here. And set your casings aside for now. Now let's get our front exterior panel ready by attaching ribbons to the right side edge of the panel. Now fold the shorter ribbon in half and place it about three inches from the bottom edge like that. I'm using these sewing clips. You can use a pin to clip it or pin it in place. Now fold the second ribbon in half as well and add it about half inches up from the first ribbon, like so. Now take the panel to your sewing machine and use 1 8 inch seam allowance to stitch along both ribbons back and forth a few times to secure them in place. Place front exterior panel with your ribbons attached right side up on a flat surface. Now center your drawstring casing along the panel's top edge. Make sure you have the same amount of fabric exposed on both sides. Take your lining panel and place it right side down 
along the exterior panel and the drawstring casing. Now line up all the edges. Make sure the casing didn't shift. Place it down. Now I'm using a solid fabric so I don't have a right or wrong side. If you were using a pattern fabric for the lining, the two right sides are together. Make sure everything is lined up neatly. Push it down and use sewing clips or pins to hold the three layers together. So once again, you will have the exterior panel, you will have a drawstring casing in the middle, you will have lining on top, right sides of the lining are together and the casing is sandwiched in between. Now go ahead and do the same for your second exterior panel, lining and the drawstring casing. Take the panels to your sewing machine and stitch along the top edge using quarter inch seam allowance back stitching at the beginning and end. Place your panel on a pressing board. Now use steam to just set the stitches a bit. Open the exterior panel, smooth out the edge on top and press. So your casing lies flat against the lining. Now do the same process for the second panel. Place one of your panels right side up on a flat surface. Bring the second panel, place it right side down on top. Exterior panels are right sides together, linings are right sides together. Line up this middle seam right here and use sewing clips or pins to hold these layers neatly in place. Line up the other side as well. And I'll go all the way around and clip the rest of the bag together. I like to put clips right here when I have my ribbons just to mark where they are so I'm careful so they don't shift while I'm stitching. I guess that's enough clips. Now we are going to stitch all the way around the perimeter of the bag using quarter inch seam allowance. What you have to be careful though is to leave about a three inch opening in the lining's bottom seam. It might be a good idea to even mark the opening right here. So this way you start right here, go all the way around the bag all the way around, around, around. Finish here, backstitch at the beginning and end. Here's our bag. We stitched all the way around here and I'm going to use fabric shears to just clip these corners so I don't have so much bulk when I turn the bag right side out and don't forget we have a little hole in the bottom seam of the lining make sure you don't clip the thread so you don't get a hole in your bag and I'm going to press this seam open. The 
this pressing will then help us closing this edge nice and neat. Now, reach into this hole and turn your bag right side out through the opening. I like to put my hand inside to help with pushing the corners out, make them nice and neat. Use your finger to push these corners out and also run your fingers along the edges to make these sides nice and even. It will make for a crisper finished look. And the same for the lining. Now, if you need to make a slightly larger opening, if you have a larger hand, just do that. Maybe even four inches is totally okay here. Okay. And now it's time to close this opening. I'll just line up the seams like so. They naturally fold in because the seam was pressed open. I use clips to hold it in place and I'm going to stitch along this edge right here using 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now the hole in the lining was closed. Now check to make sure that you did stitch both sides and then there is no more holes in there. If there is, just re-sew it. Now gently push the lining inside of your bag. Like so, and kind of run your fingers along the top edge to smooth both exterior and the lining edges. Both of them are away from the drawstring casing. Like that, push it neatly inside, like so. And now I'm going to use pins and pin through both exterior and the lining to hold my both layers together and prevent them from shifting while I do the top stitching right here. So I go through both exterior and the lining. Now I find top stitching works best when I turn my bag lining side out. So that's what I like to do. And now I'm going to stitch along this edge using 1 8 inch seam allowance and I will backstitch when I get to the end. left to do now is add drawstring to your drawstring casing right here. So push your safety pin through your cord or your ribbon about half inch from the edge and start threading it through one side of the drawstring casing. I'll go all the way around. Now I'm going to come out right here, make sure you don't pull this end in. And I'm going to continue threading it all the way to the other edge. So you're coming out on the same side that you went in. Remove the safety pin. And I like to trim off this little piece because it's kind of messy. Then I line up the edges. 
like so and tie them together make it a neat secure knot right here so one drawstring is already attached and we just need to do another one doing the same doing it the same way the only difference being now we are not going to come out in from this side but from the other side so again attached here and coming through here threading it all the way through The way to close your bag, you pull on both sides and the drawstring closes and opens. Now take your finished bag to your pressing board, give it a good press, make it nice and neat and you'll be all finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and will have lots of fun sewing up your own drawstring bags. Bye!